Guys, I'm jumping on a little bit early today. So we are gonna chat today about everything about our online courses, any Q and A's you have about the courses that we have online, um, say Brazil waxes, our online stuff, all that good stuff. So let's get over with homework. Our May 1st boot camp starts next week. We are still taking registrations for that. And the um, early bird for the mastermind skincare class is ending May 1st as well. So a lot of you guys who are trying to sign up for the mastermind and gonna do it last minute. Again, it's for skincare. It starts um, June 1st, but early bird registration ends on May 1st, okay? So a bit early today. Um, I have lots of stuff to do. We're back in California and uh, I have a busy schedule after this. So um, let me get my phone all situated here. I'm good to go. Yeah, I'm good to go. All right. Thanks so much for joining me on here. Um, we did the homework already, so I get a lot of questions about our online classes, so I want to chat about our online classes, the classes we have coming up, the shows we have coming up, um, and any Q&As that you guys have, we're going to do that tonight. So, hello! Um, I want to go ahead and give a disclaimer, so you have not seen me on Facebook, I did a free preview of um, part of my boot camp in my Smooth Skin Supply Wax Chat group, and we had a snake in the group, and they reported it as nudity, and I have been banned from Facebook for three days. So, at first I was very upset about it, um, I think that it's disappointing that there's um, an esthetician that feels that they have to ruin this, you know, free opportunity that I'm giving estheticians, almost 2,000 estheticians in this group to learn and watch waxing. Um, it's disappointing that an esthetician would take it to this point, even though it was in a closed group. Um, it's disappointing that this esthetician has ruined it really for everyone going forward because I'm not putting any more videos in our Facebook group. Any videos that I post will be on my own website and no one can block that. I own it. It's mine. Blah, blah, blah. But this really kind of shows to a lot of the pettiness that not only I deal with, but a lot of pettiness that comes to, um, um, it might be a Facebook mediator that patrols the boards. Nope. That was reported. No, it's my group. I It's mine. So this is not the first time that I've been reported um, in that group. I did a free one last year and I was reported in that. Um, it's just that another esthetician is just jealous and has ruined it pretty much for everyone. Um, so if you're in my boot camp class and you haven't heard from me, that is because my ban lifts um, Thursday. So I'll be back Thursday. If you've sent me messages and I haven't responded back, I'm not ignoring you. I just, I'm not able to respond. So, you know, it's disappointing, but at the same time, you know, I need to go to the places where I have all of the control and that's on my website. So, you know, unfortunately for estheticians who wanted to have that for a learning opportunity, um, usually you have to pay for boot camp to see what I show or pay for even just a video. Video and I offered it for free. I'm just not doing that no more. And we just can't get along. So, you know, it is what it is. You know, you got one bad apple and it spoils a bunch. So, unfortunately. So, that's what's been going on with me on, um, on Facebook. So, like I said, if you have been sending me messages, and I have quite a few, I'm not ignoring you. I just can't respond till my band is lifted. Um, about our smooth skin supply, if you guys have been sending us phone calls, our phones are down. So everything that we're doing for our website is all happening via email. So if you have a question or you need to get a hold of us, send me an email or send us an email. We also have our live chat. You can always chat with us anytime if you have any questions. Um, that's what we're going to do until our phones are up. They're transferring our toll-free number. I didn't want to get a brand new number. So it's taking them a couple more days longer. And then again, we got to go to Dallas and get the inspection for the phones. So yes, yes, always crazy stuff, you know? And the sad thing is, I think, um, when you have a fellow esthetician in this kind of environment where everyone in there is estheticians and you have one that, you know, reports to Facebook that I'm showing nudity, it, it really disappoints me because again, you know, how petty can you be? I mean, I don't really understand, but at the same time, it's really kind of eye opening again and a reminder for me, I need to go in the places that I can control. So it's just, you know, I just have to do everything on my, on my website. You know, whenever I want to do a free preview, I do it on website. I don't do it on YouTube. I don't do it on Facebook because, you know, 
We just have people that are crazy. And, you know, like I said, there's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes that I deal with with other estheticians and other companies. And this is kind of one of them. And, um, you know, it, it is what it is. So let's let's get back to what our Periscope is tonight. Um, we have a lot of you guys who have already messaged and emailed me about our upcoming boot camp. Um, they agreed to terms when they joined the closed group. Absolutely. Um, you know, and the sad thing about it too is that uh, there are so much other worse things that are on Facebook that could be reported and that are not. I mean, all these little kids beating up other kids. Um, you know, there was one that I saw that I can't watch and it was the one of the lady abusing a baby. You know, there's all kinds of crazy stuff that I see that float up on Facebook that have really nothing to do with anything, but those things are shared like millions of times. And then we're in a teaching environment and a teaching group and someone wants to report it. I, I just, I, I, I don't, you know, yeah, uh, I mean, just crazy stuff you see on Facebook and YouTube. I mean, Facebook, there's a couple things. Um, there's another thing that came through that I, I, there's a lot of stuff that I ignore too. You know, you have p police brutality that people videotape or you videotape like, you know, this, this, you know, gang initiations and stuff like that. It's just like, there's craziness. So, you know, it's, it's sad that someone would really, yeah, I mean, I don't understand the stuff that we see. And then you have someone in the group. But here's the thing. I think part of it is we have a mole that's in my group and they're trying to um, either they're trying to, I don't even know. I can't even guess on it. I don't know really what they're trying to do, but they've, you know. And the thing is, is that I'm this close to actually calling or emailing Facebook and say, I need to get the name of the person that actually reported it. So that way I can deal with it the way I want to. But at the same time, if I deal with it and go back to old Stephanie, it's not going to be pretty. So I kind of just rather let it go. I'm trying to be better about letting stuff go. Because I was almost like, you know what, I need to get on the phone. So I think in my group when I'm back, I'm just going to give a disclaimer. If you have an issue or you have a problem, you can just exit now. If I, you know, one day decide to actually do it. And, um, yep, my website is stephanielanes.com for online. And then for purchasing is S Smooth Skin Supply. Um, and if I do decide to email or call Facebook and get the name of the person that actually reported it, yeah, it's not going to be pretty. So I think I'm going to leave it because, you know, yeah, I don't want my tribe to go after them. Okay. All right. So thank you. So let's go ahead and get started with um, Q&A. So stephanielanes.com, let's start with that, is where all of my online training is. Um, would they give me a name? I don't know. I think, I'm, I, think I want to call because I want to protest it, but I'm kind of like if I protest it and I get the name... I'm trying to be better. I'm trying to be, get my woosah. I'm trying to, you know, put out good energy, get it good energy, you know, because that, that's a situation where old Stephanie will pop up, uh, you know, you know, and bad words will come out, yeah. you know, I kind of just want to stay in my lane because I think it'll be, you know, they are still in the group and that's the thing because it, it only, uh, <laughs> it only came from the group. And these are people who, you know, they're in there. And there's also someone that's blocking me too. So we might, I might have to do a cleanup. Anyway, let's go back to Q&A. Um, StephanieLanes.com is where all of our online training happens. So boot camp and um, all that good stuff. Thanks, guys. So boot camp is on StephanieLanes.com. If you want to rent a video, and I think this is where the confusion is, I have two options to watch videos. I used to have DVDs, but I got rid of DVDs because DVDs, don't change, but machines do. So we were getting a lot of people who couldn't play them. And then if you have a new laptop, it wouldn't play from the old, it won't convert, and they, you know, upgrade too much. So I really started going to just online downloads. So thank you, Celia. So what I did was put all of my videos on that you can rent. So renting means you can rent it for 30 days, it's a dollar a day, so $30. And you can rent any of the videos. Watch it as many times as you want. You only pay $30. Really, really simple. Or you can join my viewing room and the viewing room is for a year and you can watch as many times as you want all that good time. You just pay one time. You don't have to pay every month. So there's our two options for all of our videos. So it's very simple. I give you options. $30 is really nothing. A dollar a day to help yourself is really nothing. And you can choose. So we have, you know, my most popular download. I have two. The most, um, I do have YouTube channel. Yes, and that's Stephanie Lanes. You can go ahead and search for my channel. Um, the most two popular videos that I have is my plus size um, troubleshooting. 
So plus size model, long curly, curly coarse hair, and we troubleshoot it. So you see the wax get stuck, you see the cocoa get stuck, you see seven get stuck, you see the ball and you see the hair start to mound up on top of each other. I did not stop. So that's a video that I like because it is showing very long, coarse, curly hair, at least two to three inches. So it's very long. The other thing is, is that I'm not um, editing out anything. So you saw the wax gum up. You saw Coco and Diva break. You saw, I mean, so you saw a lot of stuff that you would not normally see on my videos because typically everything goes right. But with the hair being long, I really wanted to have a troubleshooting one. So that's one that's my most popular download. The second most popular download is the one that I use in boot camp, which is with Latte and Coco and Diva and Positions. That's my second um, most popular download. I also have one that's all hard wax. Um, so it's all Coco and Diva. It's from the beginning, and I actually start that from the back and work my way front. Most of my videos I start at the top and work my way to the back, but that one with all hard wax, and I typically do that with all hard waxes. I will start in the butt. Um, especially with hard waxes because I think a lot of us don't remember or we don't, you know, try to realize that as your clients get more nervous, their butt heats up faster and first. Yes, you were, darling. Um, so their butt heats up faster first, so we go, you know, from the back to the front. And I kind of get the butt out of the way, so I'm not worried about really gummy wax. I'm not worried about a little butt sweat either, because, you know, some people's butt sweat's not that great. So I really try to get the butt over with and then move to the front. Um, I don't have any brow wax videos. I always suggest for you to go to the Arch Addicts, um, Diana, who is one of the owners. She owns the Brow Teak. She does my brows. She has her own training videos. Awesome. Latte's in it, so one of my waxes are in it. Um, she has an awesome training video. So I always tell everyone to go to the Arch Addicts. Their technique is awesome. It's three of them. So it's three different types. They go over troubleshooting. They go over fill in. They go over, um, highlighting. Um, I think Brittany Whitney, if you're in here, she has taken their, um, online course. Um, I have not taken their online course. And, um, so, <laughs> so that one is really, really nice. So we love Diana. Um, I'm trying to get back to her sometime this fall. So I'm hoping I'll be able to do a periscope when I'm with her while she's doing my brows. She does the tint and wax technique where she tints and waxes at the same time. And of course she uses very well, which we love. Um, so yeah, Miss Diana and the Arch Addicts. The Arch Addicts is on Instagram and they're on Facebook and they have a private Facebook group as well as a training website the way I have a training website too. Okay, um, so there is the training portion for Brazilians on Stephanie Lanes. So I also have different courses. So I have my waxing as a business. If someone's trying to get into business and waxing, I have that online course and that's self-paced. You take it as long as you want. You can do what you want. You can do log in every day. You can log in every week or every month. It's whatever you want to do. That's a really great one. All of the mastermind classes happen there. So our mastermind class, the next one that we're doing is going to be June 1st, but that one is on skincare. I'm going to be doing another waxing one in um, November. And then I'll do another skincare probably December, January. So the waxing one is specifically 100% on waxing business, your, your um, service menu. And then the skincare one goes a little bit more in depth because I want to look at your website. I want to look at your skincare menu. I really want to look at things that you're having trouble with. I show you um, my estheticians. Um, service menu, which I've done a Periscope on that one before. Um, very clear, very concise. It's very simple. Um, a lot of estheticians just don't know really where to start when it comes to advertising. So we work on advertising, work on linking your Instagram page with your Facebook fan page and your Twitter. I go onto your website and tell you that you have too much information or you don't have enough information. I talk to you about how you advertise. Do people know where you are? Do they know how to contact you all the time? You know, how you do all these things comes on top of you offering services, offering products to sell and, and everything else. I think that's the one part that a lot of estheticians kind of ignore is the marketing. They ignore the communication. They ignore how to email when new people email you. Like there is no true pattern or um, plan. So what I do in that class is give you a plan, okay? So, you know, good job, Misty. Um, the book, the mastermind class is really great because I'm putting a, you in a group with other estheticians and you're seeing other estheticians, including yourself, look at different ideas on how to do the aesthetic business. So we have had two waxing and 
and one skincare and I have an alumni group and they're still in there talking about ideas and marketing and what's work and what's not work so you get together to have a group of people that you get to connect with and you guys are all really kind of pushing each other to be better but it's not in a competitive or secretive or any kind of like that environment it's really in a great environment because you have so many different people who are coming into the same point as you are and learning and changing and evolving so um, awesome it's really about you know getting yourself in an environment where you're focusing on your business and I said this to Angela today there are so many estheticians who are sidetracked with Facebook and Instagram and Twitter that they're actually if they took that same amount of time that they're on their plane if they took it and actually did it it would be very different um, since you're in school still, how will it work for me since you don't have a business yet? I would say wait until you start working and then you could do that. I've had a couple people who are in school and they're okay. Um, they're okay, you know, getting in there. But if you're looking at starting to do um, skincare or waxing and you're wanting to start getting your marketing plan together, I've had quite a few people who don't have their business yet, but they needed to have a marketing plan. So they really took it. So I would say, really, you want to focus on graduating first, get your license, and then come into there. Because, again, when you're in school, all you need to focus on is passing your test. That's it. You have plenty of time to come and take classes with me and go to shows and do all that other stuff. You want to kind of focus your time as much as you can when you are in school, on school, okay? you Okay, you already paid for it. Which one did you pay for? Uh, you want to strike out on your own. Then, Kamara, it's time for you to strike out on your own, honey. You can't just talk. You got to do it, you know? And I have a periscope about that. Is it time for you to go solo? Most people, you know, the skincare one. Okay, well, if you're in it, then... Take your notes. The thing about the mastermind is it doesn't go away. So once the class is over, you still have the information. You can always refer back to it. So you're fine. You're fine. But it, concentrate on school, though, too. Concentrate on school. Um, <laughs> um, the thing about going out on your own, you have to kind of do it. You, you just, you got to do it. There is never a right time to do it. All my old periscopes are on my YouTube channel. So if you go to my YouTube channel and it's Smooth Skin Supply or Stephanie Lane's type one or the other, you could do that. Will the mastermind class be good for me working for someone else? No, because I'm really focusing on you as the solo owner. Um, I really give you things that you need to do for your marketing schedule. So if you're an independent contractor um, and you rent from someone and they allow you to do your own marketing, they allow you to take your own payment and sell whatever you want, then yes. But if you work for someone and they pay you and you sell for them, you work for them, you're an employee, I would say no. Um, because I really focus on marketing skincare menus or waxing menu, your retail and, and scheduling. So if you don't have any control of that, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Not to say that you can't take it. Like I said, the information will always be there. So you could always refer to it when you do go down on your own. But if you're not on your own right now, it would be a little bit more frustrating, I would say, because you're going to see things that you could be doing for yourself, but you're doing them for the person that pays you. So it could be one or two ways. It could be a great motivator for you to get out and do what you need, or it could be very frustrating because there's things that you could be doing to make more money, but you, most of your money is going to the employer. And I think that's really how a lot of people need to look at it. And I understand that everyone kind of has a time and moment to work for someone. I always say work for someone for a year. Get everything out. Get your mistakes out. Get all of that stuff. Um... You're giving yourself the year to learn then move out on your own. Okay, well then do as much as you can in that year. And then once that year is up, get out. Don't make it year two, year three, year four. Because that's what happens with a lot of students too. They get very comfortable. I've never been one that's been comfortable when I have to report to someone. Or I'm waiting for someone to pay me. Or I'm waiting for someone to give me something. I've never really been comfortable with that. Because again, I'm giving you autonomy over how I live my life. So if I'm waiting for you to give me a check, that means I'm literally waiting for you to give me a check versus me working, you know, today I wax someone really quick. I'll be waxing someone tomorrow. I mean, it's so quick money, you know, I get it cash in my hands. So I'm not, you know, waiting for someone to hand it to me. The flip side to that is I'm not, you know, begging you know, for people to do things for me either. You know, when you typically work for someone, they're going to make the decisions. They have no idea what you're doing. You know, I, I will never get, forget the frustration that I had, even though I work for the doctor and I made very good money, um, the frustration of not being allowed to voice things 
that would affect the business in a professional and a, in a in positive way. I was always like, okay, you're just here to do peels and micro. You know, it, it's you're just here to do consults and tell people where they need to go and how they need to spend their money. I mean, it was really kind of. Um, it was it was a it was a catch twenty two because I was still working on my own. I just needed that consistent income because I had moved home. My daughter was little. I needed to pay for babysitting and I needed to do all this other stuff. But it it really motivated me to continue to do what I was doing on my own and grow that. And that period of time is what kind of birthed Smooth Skin Supply. So I went from working to the doctor and having Smooth Skin um, Studio to having Smooth Skin Studio all on my own, clients coming from the doctor to be with me, and then me being able to have the opportunity to, you know, birth Smooth Skin Supply out of Smooth Skin Studio. So, you know, if I didn't have that kind of motivation, you know, it really, I'm not sure where I really would have been with everything that I'm doing now. I probably wouldn't. I probably still would have my studio be, you know, content or whatever I'm doing you know, whatever. So I, I think, you know, you have to have some kind of motivation to really get out and not only just be on your own, but continue to learn, continue to, to really study what you're doing. And this is something that I know for a fact, because not only do I read it in my own group that we have, I read it in other groups that I have. A lot of, a lot of us don't know what we're talking about. We don't know. Um, and it's sad because we should know. And as much information as we have in our computers, as much information we have with our phones that we can look up right away, we still would rather have an opinion from someone else than look up and get the facts for ourselves. And that to me is just a lazy esthetician. And I say that all the time. If I'm asking you a question, this is what I get all the time, especially when I do a class, someone will say, well, I'm asking you. No, 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 no. I'm asking you. Because you're the one that wants to know. So I want you to actually look for the answer instead of having me tell you the answer. You know, and this is something basic as to what's the alpha hydroxy and a beta hydroxy. Why do I use salicylic when I'm treating ingrowns versus using glycolic when I'm treating ingrowns? I mean, those are simple questions that you should know. But a lot of us don't know because we don't want to know. We want to be told. So when I look at how I educate you know, and if you've ever been to a class, whether I've done it at a show, whether I've done it, you know, at, you know, I've had a class and you've come see me in a class or you've done a class with me online, I'm very intentional with the words that I use because I want to engage you and get you to the point where you want to learn. So if you're not wanting or grasping that idea that you have to continually learn as long as you are seeing people and offering services, then this is not the industry for you. It really isn't. And, and you can't go to a group on Facebook and ask a question and think that that's the final answer. You should want the tenacity to look it up for yourself, for yourself. Because I kid you not, I've had so many people, what's the last really big conversation that I've had where someone has argued me down that their friend told them? Um, what was it? Oh, I know what it was. It was... Um, it was about pre and post products for waxing and someone was using either witch hazel for a prep or was using neosporin for a post. I can't remember exactly what happened, but anyway, it was an OTC, so over the counter chemical. And I chimed in and said, why would you use an OTC when you have products in the wax line that you're using? And so this one girl was saying, you know, well, my friend told me that, you know, this can be, you know, antibacterial and this can be this and this can be that. And I'm just like, so when you go to court because you lift skin and she sues you, are you going to go to court and say, my friend said? Or are you going to actually know what you're talking about when you're looking at what you're using on people's skin? Oh, of course, she didn't like that. And she was just like, oh, you know, well, you know, people have been doing this for years. That's not an excuse. Your friend's not an excuse and people are not an excuse. So I'm telling you, it's not an excuse. So, you know, uh, you just so good in Philly show. You learned a lot with stick trick. You tried. Awesome. You know, part of our problem is, is we'd rather have somebody tell us what the answer is or what they think the answer is versus us looking it up and finding out for ourselves. I would rather look up the answer and it's easy. You can Google. I ask Jarvis on my phone all the time. What is the ingredients to this? Where can this be used? Is this ingredient sun sensitivity? Is this medication sun sensitive? You can do that now with Google with anything. We just don't want to. We'd rather be told. We'd rather be told. You know, 
And that's the thing. A lot of us don't want to. They, they, it, and it boggles my mind. A lot of these posts that I see in these groups where people are asking questions. And I'm thinking, why would you ask another esthetician when you can look it up yourself? You could go find the answer yourself. Why be told something that may be wrong instead of getting the truth yourself? Like, I never understood that. Ever. And I'm not a big fan. I, well, I don't really comment in these groups. I don't ask nobody nothing. I don't need to. I just don't. Because I would rather go look it up and get the answer myself. Versus I'm going to ask and then people are going to chime in. Oh, do this. Oh, do that. Or this is this and this is that. Why? Especially if it's wrong. You know? And that's the thing with, with wax. You know? Um, in our group, we get questions all the time about the waxes. And I say this everywhere I go. I give you the tools to be successful. You just decide not to follow them and then you add whatever you want. You get messed up or something happens and then you come find me. But I give you the tools to be successful in the beginning. I give you pre, I give you post, I give you wax, I give you gloves, I give you everything. I hand you everything that you need to be successful. It's when you steer off that path and you start doing stuff that you ain't supposed to and you start adding things that I told you not to or I didn't even give you to use... Then you get yourself in trouble. Because someone had commented and said, oh, there seems to be confusion. Oh, no, there's no confusion. Estheticians just don't follow directions. They don't listen. They just do what they want. And then they want me to come back and say, oh, case in point. We had someone that had a breakout, sent me an email. I, she broke out. What did you use? Oh, I cleaned them with some witch hazel. And then I put some oil on. And then I put some powder on. See, now you done baked on this poor girl. She's cooking. I didn't tell you to use any powder or witch hazel, did I? Did I tell you to use any oil if it's not in the bikini or Brazilian? You're cooking. You got cooking oil, you got powder, and you got some witch hazel alcohol. You're cooking. All just to remove hair. Does that make sense? No? Okay. Give her some ouch bomb and tell her to come back in a few weeks and, you know, don't touch it. Because the rash is not going to go away until you leave it alone. But that's, uh, I think, life. I think a lot of us like to experiment. We want to see what we can get away with. We want to try to dibble and dabble. Same thing with, with skincare. I see this all the time. People want to do layered peels. Do you know what you're layering? Do you know the pH of every peel? No. Do you even have a pH stick? Absolutely. I'm on a soapbox today. How many of you guys actually keep a pH stick in your room? How many of you guys even know what a pH stick is? <laughs> So you want to layer a peel, you don't know the pH balances, and you only know the percentages. Do you know what percentage means on the peel? So if you don't know any of this, then why are you layering peels? Why are you layering, layering salicylic and glycolic? Why are you layering all of them? Why are you layering enzymes with acids? Ah. Ah. Then the client burns, and then you don't know what to do. You know, it, it, yeah, so I'm going to get off my soapbox. We're going to go back to the Q&A because I think we need to really get to the point where we know what we're doing. Like, that's going to be my theme, I think, for the rest of the year. Do you know what you're doing? Because if, you're, if your clients can go on to Google and research, so can you. And that's the thing. Clients now are smart, honey. They, they will go and look up an ingredient. They'll go try to find whatever you're using, especially if they know what product line you're using. That's why so many people are going to eBay and Amazon and buying your products is because they have access to it. So again, when you start thinking about what we do, information is key. Presenting that information is even better. And then presenting it and giving results is what keeps the clients coming back. The reason, you know, the reason why a lot of um, MLM people are very, um, I wouldn't say, what's the right word? They're not necessarily aggressive, but they're very systematic. And they have the right keywords to entice people. Those same keywords and tenacity can, can be done just by us. Um, what kind of books are you looking for? Um, the reason they're so successful at it 
is because they use all the keywords. So you have a regular person has no idea about skincare, can go to a someone's house, get a script, study the script, study the answers that people typically ask for, you know, the questions that people ask, they stand, they study the answers for, and can and they got somebody else. We don't do that. I bet you all of us have products on our shelves right now. How do you attract men and teenagers for waxing and skincare services? Tiffany, do you advertise to men and teenagers? And I would not advertise to teenagers. That's a little risky. Books on ingredients and skincare products. You need to go to Allured Books, A-L-L-U-R-E-D-B-O-O-K-S. Um, Dr. Puglis has the best books on skincare ingredients. Um, he has the best books, period. So Allured Books is the best place to go. And they also rank them by what estheticians rank um, their most favorites and most popular too. And um, those are definitely a lot of books. If you're a book person, um, there's not a lot of people who are book people anymore, you know, who actually read books. A lot of people like to have stuff on Kindle or look it up that way. But if you want to have like a hardback book, that's the best place to go. And that's Allured Books. A-L-L-U-R-E-D. B O O K S. Google that. All you read books, or put all you read books, and then put for aesthetics or estheticians into Google, and it'll pop up the website for you. Um, but Dr. Puglis has great books um, available. I think um, what is his name? The uh, Vivant Skincare. He passed away, but um, I think he worked with Dr. Puglis as well, and I can't remember his name. Um, he has a couple books out too. Or he did, you know, he's passed away. But he has books as well. So those are great places to go to. But they have a lot of aesthetic books there. Lots of aesthetic books there. So, you know, we really got to start getting better about what we what we say and what we do. And how we present all of it. You know? And I don't know. And I've had two, uh, maybe three, requests for people to do, like, for me to do a retail mastermind. Um, and I, I haven't really decided if I want to do that yet or add that on to the next upcoming um, courses that I'm going to be offering, but I might because I know we have a lot of people that are struggling with retail. We have a lot of people that are struggling with the conversation of retail or even what to offer, how to offer it, when to present it, when not to present it. And I think the thing about selling retail is that it is selling. It is communications. It's conversations. And some of us are just not comfortable with conversations that are going to be a um, additional amount of money for a client to spend. Me, it's all in one. I don't separate retail and skincare or retail and services. It, it's, it's a combination because I cannot be an effective esthetician unless my clients have retail for home care. If you're only seeing me every three to four weeks, I don't know what the hell you're doing with your skin, but I want to give you something to keep your skin that way. Keep it the way it is when I have it in my hands. And the only way you can do that is with retail. I have seen probably now five posts of estheticians who say they don't sell retail. All they do is tell them what's the best over-the-counter products to do or the best natural products to buy. And to me, honestly, I don't understand that philosophy because <laughs> we don't know what people use at home. So if they don't know and you tell them to bring in what they've been using and then you give them the suggestion for what's the best that they've been using since they've been buying, to me that, that defeats the whole purpose. You go from using professional products and then you have them go and buy over-the-counter product. I never understood that philosophy. And I always equate it to this. You go to the salon to get your hair cut, your hair treated, you know, you get the keratin treatment and the Brazilian blowout or whatever, and then you come home and use dishwashing soap for your, for your shampoo. Would you do that? No. But that's the same thing that you are suggesting them to come see you for a facial, and then they go home and use whatever they want. Why? And I say this all the time, people who have, you know, it, it, it just, it, it, it's mind boggling because I think people don't understand that you're not doing yourself any favors, none. That's like me, you know, and I say that, I say that I've used that hair, to, you know, similar all the time. I use that hair one all the time. Hi, stink -a link because no, later. Um, I use that because it's very, you know, to the truth. It's like you, you know, 
But that one I think kind of shocked me because a lot of people, a lot of estheticians actually chimed in and said, yeah, I don't, I don't sell retail either. And I'm thinking, well, how are you making money? Why would I turn around and come back to you as an esthetician to get my skin to a certain state and then I go home and just use crap? I, 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 it, that makes no sense to me. But I guess those are the same people, you know, I don't know. Anyway, I'm, I'm, dig I, I'm digressing today. So where was I? Let's get back to the Q&A. So I've gotten over the masterminds. I've talked about our um, online videos. Okay. I also have my wax class. So the wax class I recorded, how long did I record that? Almost three years ago. I have the wax class season one and the wax class season two. Season one, I talk about how I started my career, all of that good stuff. I talk about, you know, my situations that I've had with men that have been inappropriate. I've talked about my situations that I've been where a woman has been inappropriate. And I really spell out the struggles that I've had early on in my career, trying to figure out how to truly make money and make this a career. And it's a struggle for a lot of us. Some people juggle, you know, full-time job and then part-time with aesthetics. Some people take the plunge and go full-time in aesthetics, don't do well, go back to corporate America and then try to get out of corporate America to go back to aesthetics. Then we have a lot of people who just get their license and then they never go back to aesthetics ever. The wax classes are on YouTube. Yes. Um, so it's really difficult for people who are in that place to really understand that place. So I really take the wax class, especially season one, I really take it with, you know, trying to explain that making the decisions to do aesthetics is very difficult in itself because it's not a career where you jump out of getting your license and make a whole lot of money. This is not that kind of career. It is a building and there has to be a building stage and a building expectation that you're not going to make a whole lot of money in the beginning of your career. It's not going to happen until you're consistently doing things correctly. Um, I didn't start making really decent money until my sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth year of being an esthetician. So for the first, you know, six years, I struggled. I struggled with what to charge. I struggled with what to offer for services, what products to use. Um, you know, I struggled on location. I struggled what hours should I be there? Should I wait all day until someone shows up or should I only schedule when I'm available? You know, I struggled with trying to figure out and trying to balance and being able to live on the amount of money that I was making and still give aesthetics my 100% attention. So, you know, when you don't have that kind of expectation up front, when you get into this industry, it's very shocking, disheartening, and sad because you've been fed this, um, what's the right word, lie, that you're going to graduate from school, get your license, go get a great paying job, and you're going to make five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten figures. And that's not really the truth. Um, most very um, successful estheticians have been in the game for at least 10 years before they see some kind of, you know, revenue. So how did you determine about location? I'm in a salon suite in a basement with no street traffic. Well, yes, you're going to need a location with street traffic. Um, or you're going to need to market consistently in every single social media area to let people know where you are. That's the hard thing about where you work. I mean, the nice thing about me is once I did my year, I did, um, absolutely. Once I did my year, I went and did repping. So I was able to go to other places. When I met Angela, I was repping for a company. I had all of Northern California. So I traveled all over the place. You know, and in Northern California, we have the high-end spas that have like $6,000 services all the way to spas that had $25 services. I was able to go up to Napa and look at all of those high, high spa ends. I was able to go to San Francisco and look at the $6,000 facial, which is crazy. And then, you know, I was able to go to places that are very, very small. There was one girl that had a room that was, you know, tiny, like it barely fit her bed, um, and was making a lot of money. So, you know, I was, I had the opportunity to look at multiple different locations and multiple different services, multiple different people and see what people were doing. 
once I decided to go on my own, I always wanted to go in a collaboration with someone who was of a professional field. So and that's why I chose the doctor. And that situation kind of happened and fell into my lap. He lived, you know, the offices were right across the street from where I live, which was awesome. He was looking for another doctor, but he was, you know, great to have me come in. He gave me one full wing. So I had my own reception. I had my own, you know, treatment rooms. Every room had a sink. So it was great. Every floor was, you know, it was prepped for doctor's room. So you know you've been to the doctor, so I don't have to worry about mats and stuff. I can clean stuff right off the floor. You know, everything was sterile. I was able to use his sterile things, which was nice. He had an autoclave. He had all these things. Um, I actually got sterile bags. So all my stuff was in sterile bags, all my, you know, everything. So I was very, very, very high end, very sterile. And it was nice. Um, you know, but I had street traffic, so I was able to put my sandwich boards out. All the clients that came in or patients that came in to see him automatically were seeing what I was doing. They smelled the lavender. They heard the music. They saw everything in the waiting area of the services that I offered, and they were able to just walk right on over. So I had a very unique um business model because I already had built in foot traffic. And that's the thing about foot traffic is I want to get people constantly coming in front of my face so that I have the opportunity to tell them what I'm doing. When I did open house, you know, I did an open house and I did it two days. I did one Friday and I did one Saturday. So Friday patients that came in, they saw everybody laughing and having a good time and they came over and laughed and had a good time and saw what we did, got some free makeovers, got some makeup on or, you know, got their brows done. And it was really, really simple. I always set up the free massage chairs when I I did, you know, client appreciation days in the waiting area. So before, you know, if they weren't pregnant, they could lay right on in there and they could get everything that they wanted to do. You know, salon suites and rooms from a beauty salon. And that's the thing. It's, it's hard when you're in a salon suite and you have other people that do what you do. It's also hard in a beauty salon because the beauty salon atmosphere is not the aesthetic atmosphere. Beauty salons are loud and crazy. A lot of people like to holler. Lots of different smells happening from, you know, if they do old school perms to coloring, you have loud blow dryers, you have loud, just people in general um you know i've never been a fan of a beauty salon just because i think that that's a completely different service for me and it's not the positive clean clear environment that i want my clients to get to because i want my clients to get to a point where they're relaxed they're not tense they don't hear anything all they hear is my music and all they smell is my oils that's it and it's hard to get people there consistently in a salon that's loud that plays loud music that's just never been my thing um my best suggestions to rent you i say go out of the box so if you can get a small office suite that's actually in a professional building if you can get um, uh, anything that is with massage therapists, I love to do dual or someone that does have massage. You have a lady wanting to come to a small and leave your business. Seems like you're going backwards. What is she wanting to have you do in the spa? Are you coming as a contractor? Is her spa successful? And does she have steep traffic and signage? You know, kind of weigh the pros and cons. I would never go anywhere unless I was going to be a contractor. So I would have my own say. I would never change from what I'm doing unless I could do the entire thing on my own. So it would be my business within the spa. The aesthetics, there are no other people in there. Um, I'm not sure what you mean, pure, be uh, pure beauty bar. You had to get out of the hair studio. Yeah, Celia, that hair salons, honey, are crazy. And then people get the hollering and carrying on and don't let the alcohol come out. Oh, God. It's a whole different ball game. You know, I mean, hair salons are hair salons. People love them. Um, it's great. But... For what we do and try to get people relaxed. And even if you're not doing, you know, fufu facials, you still want people to lay there. In the spa, there's a salon connected 8,000 square foot location. Okay, so she owns the spa inside the salon, but there's no one else doing services inside the spa or there is someone else doing services. And what would you be? Would you be a contractor or would you be an employee? That's the key. Because I would never go and be an employee. You're in an office suite. Okay, awesome. Yeah, office suites I like. Office suites are great. Um, because you know, you don't worry about all that loud drama, you know, you just don't, it, it just is. She owns the entire building working on details. You don't want to be an employee. Okay. So, um, uh, pure beauty bar. Um, what do you mean you're working on details? If you're saying you don't want to be an employee, I'm assuming she wants you to be an employee. And that should be a conversation that happens up front. I'm only coming in as a business person. I have my own business. I'm my own entity. That's the only way that I would come in here. She's asking you to make it a proposal. No, that's never good. <laughs> it's never good. <laughs> Any person that owns an 8,000 square foot facility <coughs> and has a salon and they ask you to make a proposal. Mm, yeah, Angie's in agreement too. Um, 
because here's the thing. If she had a vision for the business that she had, she would already know what your role would be. And then that would be what's on the table. Any person that's in a business and that has that much real estate, she, thank you, Anne. She doesn't know what to do. So if you come in, and Angela can speak to this as well. If you come in and you're telling her what to do because you have your own, again, you can still be an independent, but she's going to be using you to fuel and get her business started. I never would ever go into any situation where the person who owns the real estate tells me to make the, uh, uh, uh. no, nope. It's to me, that's a, that's a red flag. Um, Angela knows that as well. You got laid off in January trying to make the best decision for your business. Understandably, that situation, I would say no. Angela's saying no. We both are in agreement. That's a no. Anyone that offers you something like that. Here's the thing. If I had my own facility, I'm going to give you straight out, and I had 8,000 square feet, I would completely run it out. I'm not getting any employees. I'm collecting rent from everybody. So this is exactly how I'm going to do it. This is how much the room is. You come in, you bring your signage, you advertise, you have your clients, you make your own appointments. You can, and I probably wouldn't even let you have retail. I would do my own retail and then you get a percentage. And that's it. That's how it would work. I would not ever say to you, come make me an offer. That doesn't make any sense. Here's the thing. I have rent that I'm paying or a mortgage that I'm paying every single month that has to be met based off of what the business is doing, the revenue. So if, if I'm asking you to give me a... That's a big red flag. So I would say no. I would continue to do what you're doing or keep looking. Because here's the thing. Not every opportunity is for you. But it is a learning lesson. And this right here is a big learning lesson for you. Especially when you have someone that has that much real estate. 8,000 square feet is a real estate. That's a lot. You know the owner, so I should know how much every square foot will make me. Absolutely. Angela is correct. And the reason we say this is we're both been, we both have been spot owners. Angela has shared her story. I have shared my story. Um, we both have owned. So we know. And if she's asking you, absolutely. She obviously does not know. And that is never a good place to be in if you're trying to build your own. What you're trying to do is secure your income. Not make someone else money and make you money. That never works. Okay? So that opportunity may not be for you. But you may go back to her and say, I would be willing to rent. And this is how much I would be willing to pay. It's hard to build in the basement. You're trying to make the best decisions. Make a good decision, but offer it to her as an independent contractor. Tell her how much you're going to pay for a room. And that's it. If she doesn't take that, then you move on. That would be my suggestion. Angela may have another one. Build one client at a time. Absolutely. Um, but at the same time, I just said walk away. I, I think walk away too. Um, but if you decide to go, Go in, say, I like that room or that room. I'm willing to give you, you know, go low. I always say go low. Uh, $200 a month for the first year. After that, we can come back and renegotiate for the rent for the following year. If I decide to stay, I'm not doing a contract. This will be a month-to-month -month agreement. If you want to sign a contract, then the contract will say month-to-month. -month. I'll give you 30 days notice when I need to move. And then after a year, we can negotiate to how it go up. So you pay $800 a month, $200, wait, wait, wait. Pure Beauty Bar, honey, where are you? Please tell me where you are. Look, uh, uh, where are you located? Cincinnati, you're paying $800 a month for a basement that has no foot traffic? Wow. Wow. Are you downtown? Pure Beauty Bar? What's your name, honey? What's your name? What's your name? Sylvia. Sylvia, darling. Ebony Esthetician is in Cincinnati, too. Ebony, please connect with Sylvia. If you have any connections, Ebony, please give it to Sylvia. Because, honey, $800 a month for a basement is too much. That's too much. $200 a week. I paid $50 a week. My rent was $250. <laughs> That's why you don't want a suite in DFW. Your rent's too high. Ah, uh -uh, no, no, no. What we, we want to help you. Absolutely. 
Because here's the thing. A lot of people take advantage of us because we see the two, five, six years from now, what we could be making. But we don't live in the now with what we're making now. No, you can't make no money. You know, the, the first room I had was $200 a month. And I sure did walk in there. And their real estate, I believe for that location, it was a tanning salon. See, I love tanning salons. So y'all got to get out of the box. But that rent at that time was $3,700 a month. And I came in and paid $200 a month. That's all y'all going to get. You know they took that $200? Second room I had, $300 a month. And that went up from $250 because I came in at $250. But here's the thing. I don't, I don't negotiate with people. If you want me to bring my expertise, if you want me to come in here and change your business and have other people that would not normally walk into this business walk through your business to get to me, I'm paying $300 a month. They took it. So I did my one 250 facial and a butt wax. There's my rent. Because here's the thing. If you have a $100 rent, I'm pretty sure that every single service that you do is going to rent right now. Am I speaking the truth? Because that means that you have to average at least three clients a week in order for you to make rent. Am I speaking the truth? Yes. So if you have three clients a week that you're getting a week to make your rent, fourth and fifth and sixth client a week is the high or the overage for you to pay for your products. So tell it, Angie. Yes, she did. But see, Angela, and this is the difference. When I met Angela, Angela's saying she met, she had $1,900 for her storefront when I met her in Oakland. She's downtown Oakland across from Lake Merritt. Um, right downtown, Grand Street, lots of foot traffic. Around the corner was a hair salon. That's how I met Angela because I used to get my hair done there. So she was there all the time. You know? And absolutely, 200 or 2,000. Absolutely. But here's the thing. Angela, tell them, you do license. You do fingernails, toenails, and facials. So Angela is hustling left and right. So not only was she doing facials, and then she had a girl that was doing massage. Look, I know Angela, and I know in the, when I met her at that time, I think she was contemplating massage, so she could do that too. And I talked to her out of that. The thing is, is that she was able to get people coming into the door for not only skincare, waxing, makeup application, but she also did fingernails and toenails. You have to really understand your business. And this is what I want to try to reiterate to you, Sylvia. $800 a month is going to kill you. And I'm not saying figuratively, I mean literally your mind is going to be so wrapped up in that $800 a month that you're not going to focus on anything else but that $800 a month. And the reason I feel for you and my heart goes out to you is because there's you're, you're not... I, I, uh, absolutely, you can't buy any product. Absolutely. Because here's the thing. It... it yeah, <laughs> Angela speaking truth tonight. Yes, she had retail massage, nails, makeup, waxing, and a staff of four plus herself. Yes, she did. And then I came in there and said, honey, it's time for you to make some money. I don't, I, you hustling, but you ain't hustling right. So let's get these peels going. Absolutely, you had a plan. And then I wrecked the plan, and then her and I made a plan together, and the rest is history. You really have to understand when you are spending that much time, energy, effort into just rent, it will wear on your back like a monkey that you cannot let go. The reason that I was able to really walk in with confidence, even though at that time I left the doctor's office, I probably had 10 and then I had another 10 that came with me. That I was able to walk into that tanning salon and say, I'm going to give you $200 and I can pay first and last right now. Is because I knew my one two fifty facial would cover rent and everything else would be for products and gravy. If I came in there and gave them $800 a month, I can't guarantee that I make $800 every month. Not just for rent. Because that doesn't include my back bar. That doesn't include retail. It doesn't include my cell phone. doesn't include my computer. doesn't include anything. You know? And I'm pretty sure, Sylvia, that the fact that you don't have any retail is killing you too because the same people that you do see, the two to three that you see a week, they want retail. 
But you're at a point where you can't afford to give them the retail. So, they, and ooh, they asking, oh, honey. Honey, 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 honey. Great, great statement, Angela. Look at what you have made in the past three to six months. Write that down, what you've made. Write down how much you have in expenses. And then look at that number every month. So you take it, right now we're in, we're going into May. So go back to November. November, how much you made, November expenses. December, how much you made, December expenses. And keep them in two separate categories. So you have the months over here, you have what you made, and you have what you had expenditures for and what your profit was. If that's not your eye opener, I don't know what is. You know, see if you have some massage therapists that are around that are willing to rent their room. Um, there is, uh, I think Angela was with me. It was uh, two or three estheticians that came up to us in Chicago. And two of them are having their partner or the person they share the room with is a massage therapist. And they're not there. Massage therapists are not there all the time. Their busy times are the weekends. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um... So she did Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and was killing it, waxing and facials. So there are other avenues for you to get things, you know, include what you need to take home. Thank you, Angela. I forgot about that. Yes, include in that column what you need to take home to survive. Um, there are other options that don't have to do necessarily with a salon suite. You know, I always say get out the box. Tanning salons for me was the best thing to do because it was very cheap. I had a huge room and people, those, those people really don't know. So... For me, it was awesome. And I told him, I will do a couple skin cancer checks a year. Let's do three. I'll put it on the calendar. I have good friends that work, you know, they're dermatology nurses. They'll come down and do it for free. We can advertise. We're going to do some well checks. And we're going to check for moles and check for skin cancer and advise people. We'll do that three times a year. Oh, they loved it. Oh, thank you so much. We've never done that before. We want to make this aware. And, you know, da, 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 that will boost so many people's confidence into coming in. $200 a month. That's all I'm going to do. But you got to get out of the box. It doesn't necessarily have to be in an, in an aesthetic business. You could go to office space. There are small office spaces that are very tiny. There's a lot of office buildings that rent individual, actual, just that. You know what I'm saying? So get outside the box. Start looking on Craigslist for locations. You know, look at your state board. If state board says you have to have a sink in there. I always say go look under chiropractic offices. Go look under doctor's offices because there's actually doctors. That's how I found my doctor. Yo, you signed a lease, Sylvia. Lord have mercy. Sylvia, what's your lease, honey? Do I want to know? Is it more than a year? What did you do? You signed a lease. Okay. Is it month to month? What is your lease? <laughs> I don't want to know. Oh, no. <gasps> One more year? Oh. What? Sylvia, what did you do? You signed a three-year? Oh, my. Oh, honey. No wonder you're at your wit's end. All right, Angela's right. Own it and get a plan together. Two years. So now you know. Don't ever lock yourself into that. Your life life changes so fast to lock into something like that. Hell, I ain't even locking that for my apartment. Give me nine months. <laughs> Just things change. You know, things change. You know, it's hard. And that's, and that's a hard monkey to carry around, honey. For two years... You got to make sure you're coming up with $800 a month on top of what it costs for you to be living and, and, and live and not, you know, live, eat, roof over your head, you know, maybe TV, maybe no TV. That's a lot. So I would love for you to come up with a plan. Come up with a plan for you to get yourself to the point where you don't have to feel like this going in. Because the worst thing is feeling like this, and I've said this in many of Periscopes, is you know rent is due next week and you got $500 and your rent's $800. There's nothing like that. That pit in your stomach stays with you morning and night. You go to bed with it and you wake up with it. I mean, I'm, I'm preaching now, so I'll let it go. I would love for you to come up with a plan. Find out if you can sublease. Yes, definitely start looking. Um, yes, it's, 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 I, I, the only reason I can say this, honestly, Sylvia, is I've been there. 
I've absolutely been there. I've been there where I'm looking like, ain't nobody up in this place, really. There's another arrow that goes by that I'm not making no money. What? <laughs> absolutely horrible. It's horrible. But I've been there. Anytime you need motivation, like I said, my wax class, um, the first season, I talk about that. I talk truly about motivation. Sublease is getting another person to lease that lease that you have. So the lease that she has for $800, she might be able to get someone to come in under $700 and she just eat the $100 and do it that way. To another esthetician, massage therapist, someone to compliment your services. Absolutely. Um, again, I, I'm a fan of tanning salons. People just, they sleep on that. I'm a fan of, of office space. There's a lot of people in office space that rent out individual offices that people just don't know about. And, you know, if you have a sink, yay, I got a sink that I don't have to worry about. There's a lot of places that you could really carve out for yourself that don't necessarily have to specifically be in a salon or spa environment. You can make that environment. You could take four walls and make it an environment. Um, I'm thinking about the next time I go see Diana. She has a basic office space and turn it into a true boutique. You know, and uh, Angela and I have been there and we have oohed and odd and looked at stuff and said, wow, you, wow, you have probably seen people transform just a simple four walls into an inviting place. You can do it, but you got to get outside of this. This can't block you. I got to be in a salon. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. Create a retail plan, small investment, large return. Absolutely. You know, beg, borrow and steal if you can. You know, especially family. That was my thing with retail. You know, once I really started understanding, understanding the retail game, I could not not have retail. And honey, if your clients are asking for it, you got to get it. You know, you got to get it. So anyway, this has been very interesting tonight. Thank you so much for you guys for sharing. I always want to save that. Yes, you need to get some retail love. You need to get some retail. So weekly parties and events, honey. Yes, indeed. You can actually, um, Angela and I have both used this. We have gone to the massage schools. There are students that have to get hours. I tell them, send me over two massage students for the chairs. I have an event. I put them up in the waiting room. Y'all take notes. I need you to do 30 minutes at a time. You get a 15 minute break in between. I need you from nine to five and you can do that. Retail is an extension of the services you provide. Absolutely. So I have done that. Angela have done that. We have both used the massage schools. I need you to send over some students. I need you to work on these people. We have a party coming on um, this weekend. It's going to be for eight hours. And they come in. I sign up on their eight hours. I said, I'll call the school again on another day. So there's things that you can do that don't necessarily mean you have to use your hands. You just got to get the hustling. You know what I'm saying? Just really got to get hustle. Hustle, 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 hustle. And even if you have one room, you could put up a, look, Angela knows, you put up a nice uh, curtain. And you only use the curtain when you need to divide the room off. You can still have the person in there. You can suggest for female, and I've done that a lot. Um, I need a female massage student to come in on this day. I'm doing client appreciation day. So you tell your clients, come 15 minutes early. You get a free 15-minute uh, chair massage, and you're massaging on that person while I'm finishing up with that person. Get the next person in. Yes. There's ways that you can do it. You just got to get outside the box. You got to get outside the box. I've hustled that way for a long time. Um, you know, and it doesn't have to be something that I physically have to do. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's the thing where we get so caught up. What can I do? I can only do so much. I only got two hands. So I'm either giving a facial, I'm giving a waxing service, I'm putting makeup on someone, but that's really all I can do. You're going to ask her to let you out of the lease. Did you read the lease? Is there a fee or a penalty for breaking your lease? I would read that first before I talk to her. Uh, oh, Sylvia, honey, I know this is a big learning lesson for you, darling. Yeah, big learning lesson. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Good luck to you. Yeah. You're in a doctor's office that pay no rent. You give her a percentage on everything you do except your retail. Awesome. Yes, honey. Yes. That's how you do. See, and I love doctor's offices too. I mean, I, you know, chiropractors, doctors, I mean, they're great because they already have the rooms with sinks. People don't realize that. So my sink is in the room. I don't have to worry about it. That's why I went with the doctor when I first started because I knew every sink was in the room. They had hot water. 
and they have to have a certain hot water amount in order for them to actually be able to offer water when they get inspected. So there has to be a certain degree and it covers in for me too. You know, they have autoclaves. I love the autoclave. I had all my stuff sterilized in there. So I passed all of that, kept it in little sterilized bags till I need it. You know, when I when people come in and look in the drawers, everything was in sterilized bags, tweezers, extractors, you know, everything I put in the autoclave. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. And see, a lot of these places that are like salon suites and stuff are taking advantage of us because we don't ask those questions. I don't think I could ever afford to pay $100 a week. I'd be happy paying $50 a week, but I would never pay $100 a week or $200 a week. Oh, no. I can't guarantee that from the beginning that I signed something like that. And if they want first and last month too, no. Anyway, off my soapbox. So those of you guys who are coming along and doing last minute, boot camp starts on Sunday. Early bird for the uh, skincare mastermind ends on Sunday. So late bird is late bird. What about rent and single apartment and share with others? Apartment. You know, um, renting apartments, I think, and Angela can talk about this too, I think your apartment has to be listed as a business dwelling. It can't be a some kind of dwelling. Because I know there are homes that are businesses, but they're listed under as business zoned. And I don't think apartments are zoned under business. And then you, you fall into other things because, you know, the insurance changes too. So um, I, would, I, I don't think that that's an option. Um but you could go into a business house and there's kind of up here in Northern California, there's a lot of businesses that are actually in houses, but they're zoned in a business section. So when it comes to the insurance, the insurance goes based off of the zone. And then, um, yeah, but there's a lot of those two, like I said, office space that rent out in offices that have houses, rooms in there too. So you really got to get outside the box, get outside the box. This has been real interesting. It's a great conversation tonight. I am going to cut it short because I'm here at 7.30. Yes, absolutely. Shipping and delivering at the house. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, Mastermind, Early Bird, Brazilian Boot Camp starts on Sunday because that's May 1st. The Early Bird ends Sunday for the Skincare Mastermind. There's a lot of you guys who do last minute, so I'll get a whole bunch of registrations on Saturday. Um... So yeah, this was really, really great. We had a great conversation and we went to the left, but you know what? It's fine. We had lots of Q&As about um, our online classes, a lots of Q&As about what's going on on stephanielanes.com. So if you do want to read a Brazilian wax video, you can go on there. It's 30 bucks, a dollar a day. It's great. Sylvia, I wish you all the luck. Please keep us informed as to what's going on. Um, and definitely we will, you know, definitely be encouraging you to, to find a place that works for you and that you can get a place that you can come to and enjoy what you do. And it doesn't become a burden anymore. Cause that's what happens. It becomes a burden when you know, you know, rent is due next week and you got $500 or you know that it's slow and ain't nobody coming in for the next two weeks. I mean, we're definitely keep, I'm keeping you definitely sending positive vibes and energy to you that you will get a place that we will be able to be profitable. You'll be able to get a plan together and you'll be able to do what your heart desires. And that is to do what you love and be able to live off of the income that you get by doing what you love. That's really what we do and why we do it. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Absolutely. Yes, Sylvia, thank you for sharing. You don't, no one wants to ever give up, you know, you never want to give up and you may have to, you know, hustle hard. You may have to go work at a salon part-time as an employee to keep the money coming in for your own. I've done that too. I worked for the doctor. Part of my income from the doctor went to pay my rent and the other part went to pay the babysitter. So, you know, I understand. Trust me when I say I've been there. I completely understand. I understand exactly how you feel. We'll definitely be keeping you um, in our thoughts. And please definitely let us know, you know, what happens. I hope you're in my Smooth Skin Supply Wax Chat group. Please post up any updates you have. We definitely would, would want to encourage you. There was another girl in here tonight who is also in Cincinnati. I hope you guys can reach each other um, or even post in my group who else is in Cincinnati. You never know. Estheticians know. We know stuff. But you never know what's happening there unless you actually open up yourself and ask. Yes, you're taking the Brazilian class right now. Awesome. Um, so yeah, 
we got it. I'm going to go ahead and sign off, guys. I will be in Boston on Sunday, so I'll be probably periscoping from Catherine Hines. More than likely, Angela and I will both be periscoping. Um, people like free things. Do a free eyebrow. Ah! You know, we don't say the F word up in here. You know, I don't do nothing for free. They like it free, but once you offer free, you got to keep offering free. I don't do free. I'll do low. I'll charge lower before I do free. I got to cover the cost of what it costs me to do it. So, yeah, I don't use the free word. that I don't use the F word that much. Yes. They already don't want to pay. <laughs> you know what? That's the thing about people. None of them want to pay. You know, if you've read that article, I posted it in my group and I posted it on my page about when clients ask for a discount or ask for a free, we should be asking why. Yes. I love that article. It's a great article. Okay, guys, I got to go. I got to go pick up my husband from the airport. So I will talk to you guys later. Bye.